like it was just finished. If you can see a drip or a mark or something that maybe, you know, is like a surprise, then, then I, you know, that's what I want. I understand that people can't always make a decision in one evening and that kind of thing. So I am just really pleased to be here so that people can experience my work and I can talk to them about it. I also have a show right now over at the uh, police department. And so that's, you know, that's a real honor to be there as well. My studio is uh, Front Street, downtown, and that's where I work. And I, all these paintings came from there, and I've been there about six years now. This particular series here is called Rhythms and Rows. It really captures the rhythm of painting. It almost looks windswept because it catches the motion of the stroke, which I feel is very successful. Yes, this is my first time at Art at the Trays. Well, I'm coming out to show, show my paintings and uh, show some mugs uh, that my brother and I have been working on. I, I don't think I, I, I think I do have a style. I don't, I'm not going for anything particular though. I'm influenced by certain artists, Picasso, Richard Diebenkorn from San Francisco Bay Area. So it's just kind of different influences that are coming together to uh, kind of create my style, though I don't really mean that for it to be anything particular. My brother and I started working on ceramics. We're making mugs. Uh, we're selling them at some local coffee shops right now. And uh, so that's, that's going pretty good. Places like Central Perk, Ghostlight, in downtown Dayton. And uh, so, yeah. Well, I, I work with the gallery downtown Dayton and through some people I knew down there, uh, they had some contacts out here with the Centerville Arts Commission. And uh, so they got in contact with me. I actually uh, showed my work at the police station in January. So, and then just they just told me about Art at the Trace. So uh, I came out here for that. In January, I had a show at Sinclair Community College Works on Paper Gallery. And I had really great publicity from the Dayton Daily News and the Dayton City Paper. And I think on a whim, uh, an old friend had given me a phone call and uh, asked if I would be interested in participating in this, as well as putting the show up into the, the Centerville Police Station in March. And I said I would be happy to do that. You know, I think both are, are great, great organizations, good events. And you know, I was in the very first one eight years ago, and it's grown exponentially each year, and it's a, a very cool event. You know, I've seen a lot of old friends, uh, some new friends, and it's kind of all walks of life, it seems like. It brings us all closer together. It, it shows how art affects us as a community. I was trained as a printmaker, and I have on display tonight Intaglio prints, etchings, as well as oil paintings on canvas and panel, along with mixed media collage pieces. You know, it's somewhat emotive, and you know, it stems from feelings from things that have happened personally to me or people I know. And so it's kind of a personal history about visual narrative. Thank you, Centerville. I actually work for Mike Elsaw, who's another artist here in Dayton. And he's been out here a couple years, so this year we just decided to get our own booth too. I think a lot of people who won't necessarily come downtown to the art scene will see art that they won't get to see otherwise. It kind of brings art out to the suburbs, you know, artists that would usually show in other places, and I think it's great. Well, I actually grew up in Columbus and went to UD, and then I started working for a gallery in Dayton. Um, well, my work's photography. I heard it's the only photography here tonight, so that's different. Usually there's a lot of photography, and I use a toy camera which is really different. It's made out of plastic, 
It uses film and I kind of use it on western landscapes. They're all from Arizona or Washington State. I feel like the landscapes out there that are so dry and decrepit kind of lend themselves to the image because these toy cameras you know, come out with really eerie, kind of creepy images. So I like to use them when I'm out west. No, it's a toy. It's all plastic, even the lens. Um, you put film in it, 120 film that's old, it's square format. Um, and the viewfinder doesn't line up with the lens, so it's actually really hard to know what you're getting. But it's a big surprise. There's a lot of light leaks. In one of the photos, you can see the number from the film is actually burned into the image because the sun kind of burns things into the image. They're really fun to work with, but yeah, I just think there's a lot of great different artists here. There's, um, you know, abstract, drawing, painting. I think it's a really great night, so I'm glad everyone came out. Well, this is probably my fifth or sixth year here. I love the event. I was here at the very first one, and uh, it's great people. Uh, uh, the committee with Jenny, uh, uh, the head of the, uh, the Centerville Arts is, uh, is great. And you see a lot of your collectors, good friends, and the fellow artists. Maha and Jenny have been painting with me uh, yes. down in my studio. Uh, and so that's, that's a lot of fun, good energy. Wow, the crowd's big. Uh, the, uh, the, the placement, uh, the booths are great. Uh, I can't get it to food because the crowd's so big. Yeah, but, that's uh, true. What, what the heck? I brought you some. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's good, good energy. Great I love crowd to be this here. year. What's well, interesting? I meet a lot of friends I haven't seen in a year, and uh, that that's interesting to me. And meet, always meet new people. I'm doing a big commission piece. Uh, I met her this morning down my studio from uh, a lady I met here last year. So. Uh, you know, I uh, work on weather uh, reclaimed steel, and uh, most of it comes from a local scrapyard. And then I put uh, acrylic paint, uh, uh, silicate sand, steel shavings, marble dust, a uh, whole variety of things, and then we finish them out. And I don't know which way they hang, so all these pieces <laughs> could hang uh, any di any direction. <laughs> Yep, this way or this way, maybe that way. <laughs> it's good to have supporters. This is Maha Kashani and Jenny Strasberg, and their support in the community is really vital for artists, and I thank them. It's exciting to have so many great local artists showcased here at Art at the Trace. A lot of fun. Last year I left with the, one of the really large Mike Elsa pieces, kind of like what's behind Ginny. So not sure I can do that again this year, but you know, it's a really great way to come out and support local art. So happy to be here, happy to be supporting Mike, and we're having a great time. Well, and the, the one thing we've tried to do last year and this year is to reach out to more, art, to more artists to get some unique artists. We have probably more different artists here than we've ever had in the past. So that's good, because that brings in more folks, and we have a large crowd, so, and Maha is great in helping us get volunteers. You know, the young people to come out, and we need the young people engaged in the arts in our community. So, uh, that's great. Yeah. Having lots of fun. Art at the Trace 2013. I had been aware of Art at the Trace for a while, and I was talking to Jenny Strasberg, and she asked me if I'd ever done it. I said no. Uh, I wasn't sure how to go about doing it, and she put me in touch with the right people, and here I am. It's a wonderful evening. It's, it's a big party. People have been great and interested in the art, looking at it, talking about it. Um, I think it's a really festive atmosphere, and it seems to me that the Arts Commission does a really nice job with it. I'm a collage artist. I love paper. I seem to be able to think in paper terms of paper. I like I like history. I tend to be a kind of a narrative artist, so a lot of the pieces are results of um, historical things that I'm interested in, women's history. Got a series I call the Wall series that is based on the Western Wall in Jerusalem, and uh, a wall that I designed here in Dayton that is meant to allude to the Western Wall so that you can leave your thoughts and prayers at the wall. So there's usually some story or incident, some experience that leads to a series of work. And everything you see here is paper, there's no paint. So I usually have to make that distinction for people and uh, 
And then I like to work with figures too. That's kind of practice, trying to get better at figures. I've, I've made some new friends. I've reconnected with some older friends that I haven't seen in a while. And I've gotten to see a lot of really great artwork around me. I think uh, we have wonderful artists here in the Miami Valley, lots and lots of talent. And I enjoy, I enjoy venues like this because you get to see everyone's individual thought as an artist. It's wonderful. I have a studio at home. Um, I show some work at uh, CADC Gallery downtown on St. Clair and I have a website and then I just show and exhibit wherever I can. My main goal was to hopefully um, open up my work to some new people that hadn't seen it and weren't familiar with what I do and, and the way I work in collage seems to be kind of unusual. So uh, just to get people more excited about visual art and how it can enliven your life. I want to thank the Arts Commission for having this venue and letting us participate. It's wonderful. I just recently joined the Heart of Centerville. So wonderful group of people um, that is uh, businesses of Centerville. And they told me about this event here. and. I was very honored and I was very grateful that at the last minute they were allowing me to come in. So I sent a couple of photographs you know, of my work you know, to the person in charge and she said she has a spot for me so I was very grateful for that. So Originally I was born in St. Louis, Missouri and um, I moved to South Bend, Indiana. And I, that's where I started my career as a technical illustrator, uh, working for Notre Dame. Uh, some doctors out there doing a lot of technical illustrating work. And then I met my husband, who helps me very much. And um, we moved a couple of times in his business, brought me here to Dayton. Um, and I have done some scenery painting for theater and that's how I evolved from technical illustration, graphic arts to fine art. And people saw my paintings and they just asked me, can you do this for me? Can you paint my garden for me? And so I would paint the garden and then they would show somebody else and so I wanted to meet lots of new people and get the word out that I can paint and that I can take commissions and I can take someone's portrait and make an heirloom, you know, that will last for generations. I can paint homes and gardens and people's famous, maybe their favorite vacation photos and turn it into an heirloom that they can give to their family as a gift. They're wonderful gifts. So I've met my goal by meeting wonderful people. Everybody here I have met is special. They've all seemed to like my work and I appreciate it very much. I'm trying to just get the word out that, you know, I'm just starting to try to expand a little bit. So I work in oils. Uh, primarily and I work in the Flemish method it's an old classical method that Leonardo da Vinci used to use and Rembrandt it's done in fine layers of paint most people in that I found paint a la prima which is a fast method quick and they can do it in two hours where mine takes you know a layer it dries and then I do another layer on top and like Leonardo da Vinci, when he does his portraits, he would do uh, green layers and purple layers and golden umbra or golden ochre layers and umbra layers. And um, so I, for my portraits, I do lots of different extra layers in the Flemish method. The landscapes, I don't use as many um, different layers like Leonardo da Vinci, but there's still a lot of layers. I. I bypass a couple of different, you know, specialty layers when I do landscapes, but but that's what makes this a little bit different. Um, nobody really teaches this. Um, there's one master 
in Seattle that teaches, I teach now. So I'm the only one that I'm aware of that teaches this Flemish method in, in America, really. I mean, there might be somebody, but I'm unaware of it. I have a studio, Old Masters Galleria in Centerville, and it's uh, by Bill's Donuts. So um, very close there. Um, I can take a beginner. I have a 12-year-old 12 uh, 12 student. You should see her painting. It's amazing. I've taught a 92-year-old. You should see her painting. Both of them have never painted in their life. Most people that I've taught, they have never painted in their life. And I can turn them into great artists. There's been some wonderful people here, and I've met um, Lots of wonderful artists here as well, and I am so glad that I joined the Heart of Centerville because I've met not just wonderful people, but businesses that could help me grow as well. And I would encourage any new business to join the Heart of Centerville, no doubt, because they're all wonderful.